Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Nikita from BISP Solution. In this session, we are going to see how we can create the employee only standard rate for medical option. So first, I'll just give you the overview of the rates. So basically, rate determines the cost for buying benefit coverage, such as the life or health insurance. And it's usually determine an amount of monetary contribution uh, paid by the employee, employer, or a combination of both. And rates can also determine amount distributed from the employer to the employee, such as the tuition reimbursement. So rates are defined as an activity rate calculation to determine the contribution that an employee and some in uh, and in some cases an employer. So spend to purchase a benefit on a recurring or non-recurring basis. Activity rates also determine the monetary distribution paid from the plan such as the saving plan or a flexible accounting plan. Okay. So these are the ways to create rates in benefit. So we see the standard rate in today's session, how we can create the standard rate for employee. Let's just move on to the application. Okay, so you have to log in as an implementation user, then move on to the benefit administration and then go to the plan configuration option. Okay, and you can set your effective as of date here, or you can also set under the configuration page. So we are going to create rate. So we have to move on to the rate then coverage option. Here you can set your effective as of date. And when you click on the create option here, you can see the standard rate. Okay, and here you can see the variable rate profile. Then, because we are going to create the standard rate, so just click on this. So here we can give the rate name. Because we are going, uh, we are creating here the employee only contribution uh, rate. So here I'll just give the name according to our rates. And now what we have to do, we have to uh, select the plan here. So we are creating the this rate for the medical option. So we have to select the plan accordingly then we have to select the employee only here okay and now what we have to do we have to select the legal employer for which legal employer you are creating this standard rate and under the rate display type you can see here the uh, you, uh, you can select the primary rate display to allow entry of values and primary and secondary rates appear on enrollment page while other rate display in a separate uh, window. So basically when you select the primary rate, so it's appear in the primary rate column during the enrollment, it enables rates entry. Uh, it's typically for the employee rate. And when you select the secondary option here under the rate, display rate type so it's appear in the secondary rate column during the enrollment but does not enable rate entry so it's typically used by the employer rate so here we are selecting here the primary because we are creating for the employee okay now next we have here the payroll information so first we have the activity type so it indicates whether it is a contribution or distribution made by the participants or the employer 
examples are like uh, employee individual contribution or employer matching plan contribution or employer distribution here you can see the activity type so here i'm going to select the employee payroll because we are creating here this rate for the employee so we are going to select here employee payroll contribution okay and the next we have the unit of measure so if you are defining a calculation for a, a non monetary distribution so you can define the unit of measure in which that distribution is expressed like such as the option for stock options right so i am leave it as a blank here i'm not going to select any option here now next we have here these option so first is a in element and input valuation so are element and input value required for this rate so if yes they are so you have to select this check this box on we are going to determine what the input value is to pass it to the payroll but they are required here so that's why we have to check this box on then do you want to assign the uh, assign this rate on a on a enrollment so automatically entered the calculated rate during the enrollment like when you select so it's up automatically appeared here you can automatically enter the calculated amount on during the enrollment and do you do you want to uh, this to display so display the rate on the employment page well if you don't display it how is the employee supposed to know how much it cost right so, um, and then once uh, uh, we have enrolled uh, then you are going to assign um, employee the element and then we uh, said element and input value are required here right so it's important to check this boxes on here now next we have is a text type code so in, it indicates the tax impact on this calculation on which the contribution or distribution is made to the participant like such as the pre tax or after tax or non taxable here you can see the taxable okay so here we are going to select the pre tax and next we have the pay payroll element so here we have to associate element with it so it's a employee contribution because we are creating for employee here okay and here under the element input value so it's used to transfer the uh, benefit rate to the payroll through the element entries before you can uh, select an element input value you must first select any payroll element right for this is standard rate so we al already select the payroll element here and what we are going to do now select the uh, input value here as an amount and next we have the uh, value passed to the payroll option so here you can see there are different kinds of uh, uh, options here so what is a communicated amount so it's uh, the communicated amount to, uh, to part participant as their expected contribution or distribution and next amount that you define for the rate which may be uh, different from the amount communicated to the participant is a defined amount and here we have the estimate per pay period amount so it's an estimate based on a fixed number of pay period for example a bi-weekly payroll might occasionally have 20 to 27 pay period in a calendar year depending on the setup and likewise a weekly payroll might have 51 or 53 period so when you select this option the calculation uses the usual number of pay period which are 26 for bi-weekly or 52 for weekly right and next we have here the per pay period amount so the actual per pay period amount based on the defined ca calculation like if you don't select a value the calculation uses the per pay period amount and if you can prorate only per pay period amount right so here what we are going to do and at last we have also one more amount the annual amount here so it's defined as a 
amount annualized okay so here we are going to uh, select as a per pay period amount okay and then next we have here the calculation method so here what we are going to do we are going to select the flat amount here and then uh, next what we are going to do for fill the amount like here if i fill the 188 amount value here and then we are going to the next step which is processing information so here uh, what is the processing source here so our processing source we are going to select here uh, the payroll and please make sure this checkbox is on the process each pay period by default okay and here uh, we are selecting here the source uh, for the processing this calculation in the application so if you are uh, want this processing source from the accounts payable so you can select this but we are uh, creating this standard for the payroll so i'm selecting here the payroll okay and then we are selecting here the recurring that's how we can create the standard rate for medical option only for the employee then we are going to save and close this okay so let's just search for our standard rate it's created or not so yeah it's uh, created so this is the way you can create the standard rate for only employee for the medical option i hope this process clear to you so thank you so much for watching the video